we have been seeing ourselves. Amen. The moment of truth. Amen. We are going to have a wonderful time. Yes. Yes, my able assistant, <laughs> she's here to assist me. God bless you, ma. Okay, so it's time for um, our sermon review. Um, for the past couple of weeks, we have gone through a series of um, teachings from our mommy, and today is the day for review, the day we review all that we have learned and have understood. I believe for some of us, when we went home, um, the Holy Spirit ministered unto us. The words kept coming back to us. And then there was revelation as we went on in our day. And I, I believe that as we review today's sermon review, as we review the sermon review, <laughs> but, <laughs> as we review the sermon for the past weeks, the Holy Spirit will continue to enlighten us to uh, walk in the right path. Amen. Okay, so today is going to be different. Today I'm not going to call anyone. You are going to pick the questions for yourself. Amen. So, any volunteer to pick the first question? Oh, yes, because it's just <laughs> everyone will pick at least one question. You don't need to do anything to live holy. God is solely responsible for your walk of holiness. Explain your answer. Part B. What is the one thing that can help you live a holy life? This which question? Question. Question six. Amen. Question six. You can have the question, but there's a there's there's a twist. There's a twist. The person who picks question four automatically picks question fifteen. So <laughs> the person who picks and the person who picks question four can choose anyone to answer either question four or question fifteen. Yes. Yeah, so if you choose question four. You have automatically question 15. And then you can choose anyone to answer either. Yes. Okay. So, question 6. Okay, so... The question is... You don't need to do anything to live holy. God is solely responsible for your work of holiness. Explain. So... God is not solely responsible for you to walk in holiness. You also, God requir requires your will because God works through us. God works through us. So if God is working through us, we need to submit to his instructions. That is the Holy Spirit, so it's not true. And then, what is the one thing that can help you live a holy life? One thing. You need the Holy Spirit to overcome Mr. Flesh. So. Amen. God bless you. Is it, can anyone uh, remember or support them? Can we please give him a hand of applause? Eh? <laughs> can anyone um, support this um, question? If we heard the question, one thing that can help us to live a holy life. Apart from the Holy Spirit, you have to always rely on the Word of God. The Word of God. Amen. Constantly. The Amen. Word of God. Amen. The last, the last thing. Anyone else? Praise the Lord. We have to resolve. We have to resolve in our hearts that we want to live a holy life. Resolve in our hearts to live a holy life. Okay. Amen. According to our message for the previous weeks, what was said to live a holy life is our intentionality. We must be intentional to live a holy life. That's what she said. Yeah, so to be intentional to live a holy life. Amen. 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 That's question six. Okay, let's go. Next person. 
the person who pays question four automatically question pays ten. question four. Question ten, yes. Let's if go. you do not uproot Mr. Flesh, Mr. Flesh's will, how do you understand this statement? Oh, sorry. If you do not uproot Mr. Flesh, Flesh? Mr. Flesh will. How do you understand this statement? <laughs> If you do not approve Mr. Flesh, Mr. Flesh will. Do, 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 do. Yes. Then, when you are able Approach to feel. You. Can you give him a hand of applause? Can you give him a hand of applause? Yes. If you do not approve Mr. Flesh, Mr. Flesh will approve you. But can someone explain? Okay, can you try to explain? That means he'll take control of you and you won't be able to control the will of Mr. Flesh. Can we give this boy a hand of applause? Yes. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Okiki. Okiki, okay, listen to the sermon. <laughs> Thank you. Next patient. Next patient. Next. <laughs> wait, wait. Then I'm curious. Pa patient is answering question 13. <laughs> We are whole. Amen. Okay. Patient has chosen question 13. Question 13. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll read my question myself. <laughs> what is the devil's greatest tool to make the word of God in our mouths unacceptable? Can you read it one more time? What is the devil's greatest tool to make to make the word of God in our mouth unacceptable. The devil's greatest tool. Guilt. Can we give this man a hand of applause? <laughs> this man was listening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Samuel. God bless you. The devil uses our guilt. The guilt. In engaging in Mr. Flesh. He uses guilt. Amen. May the devil not use guilt in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, okay. Yes, can you explain? Okay, how the devil uses guilt to... I think if we go back to the... I mean, I, I know we're talking about this. But one of the things we talked about Sunday school this morning was um, the fear to... When you... When, like, to acknowledge your sin and be, um, be remorseful and repent. If you, there's a fear that comes with that, and if you don't, if you don't deal with that fear and allow God, in, like take control of that, you might, you will not be able to actually, you know, um, you will continue to allow Mr. Flesh work in you exactly if you give into that fear and that guilt. You know, the fear that oh, I am this, I am that. If you continue to give into it, then Mr. Flesh will continue to manifest in you. Amen. Amen. We said this morning that you are not truly delivered or you are not truly free until you are able to deliver others or you are able to talk about what you have been through freely. Amen. Okay. Can we go to the next person, please? Antidocus. Jo Joseph. Wow. Joseph. Jo Joseph, who is Mr. Flesh? Wow. That's question, question one. Question one. Flesh is something that lives in you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Flesh is, uh, is he, something that lives. Yeah. He makes you do bad, bad stuff. Wow. Can we clap for Joseph? Let's give a hand of applause for Joseph. Yes. Can someone kindly expansiate <laughs> on what Joseph said? Joseph is 100% right. He's 100. This someone is very, very relatable. It's very relatable. So I'm sure... Um, yes, Mr. Um, Mano wants to help us. So, Who's Mr. Flesh? like he said, Mr. Flesh lives in us. As the Holy Spirit lives in us. Same as Mr. Flesh. And Mr. Flesh is always craving for the flesh, right? So the Bible says that 
I always say that the greatest battlefield is our mind, and it's always fighting the whole, like our will to do things for God. That is what the ba- the battle is. Yeah. Amen. It's the flesh, a sin living in us. There is a man living in us who can contaminate our lives as believers. That is our sinful nature. Um, Galatians chapter 5 verse 17, Romans chapter 7 verse 17, 15, all talks about whom is the flesh. Amen. Okay, can we go to the next? Next? Yes, Ore has picked question 5. Wow. Ore, can you be carnally minded and spiritually minded at the same time? No. She said no. Is she correct? She's 100% correct. <laughs> can we clap for the children? The children are, are really killing it today. Okay, he is going to is support no. with the explanation. Okay, 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 let's go. You can't be carnally minded and spiritually minded because carnally minded is something Mr. Flesh does, but the spirit is with God. Uh, <laughs> in fact, in fact, the, these children are, are like pastors and prophets and apostles and teachers and all the kids. Uh, next question. <laughs> next question. <laughs> yes, yes. The kids have actually, achi- have actually challenged the adults. They've, they've challenged If there's an adult, we can answer a question today. Yeah. The kids. The kids are on fire. Amen. This is what we want. This is what we want. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Our next patient has picked question eight. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is question eight. How does being attached to the flesh affect our relationship with God? Being attached to the flesh. Okay, what the flesh does is fights against the spirit of God in us. So if we are attached to the flesh, there's no way we'll do what God wants. Like um, said, being carnally mind is flesh. <laughs> like how you're so, referring to Kiki. <laughs> huh? that's, that's raised the bar. <laughs> so if you're attached to Mr. Flesh, definitely you'll be drawn away from God. True. And um, you can't keep the commandments of God. Being uh, attached can to we Mr. give our sister um, a hand of applause? Hey. <laughs> Mr. Evans. <laughs> Mr. Evans wants you to go deeper. Can Mr. Evans help him? Evans, help, help her. Help her. This is a, your bonus question. <laughs> Let's read Romans chapter 7 verse 18 going. Romans okay. chapter 7 verse... <laughs> Evans. Hmm. Romans seven eighteen. Read it. Read it. I know that nothing good lives in me. When the power is at work in you, that means you do what is right. So we should allow the Holy Spirit to always be in our spirit so that we direct at our part. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Evans, for supporting our sister. <laughs> supporting vocalist. <laughs> okay, our sister, Sister Nefi, has picked the question. Please. Nefi, yeah, Nefi. <laughs> okay, so what are the ways to what deal question, with please? Question 11. Question 11. No one is picking question 4. Mm. Yeah, Glory to God. <laughs> oh. Question 11. Okay, so what are the ways to deal with Mr. Flesh? What are the ways to deal with Mr. Flesh? Yes, there, are, there were about four things that were mentioned during the sermon. One of them is through the word of God. 
Through the word of God. Amen. Can you bless us with the... Um, okay, you are not here. Okay. The question again, please. Um, so the question is, what are the ways to deal with Mr. Flesh? The ways to deal with Mr. Flesh. Word of God. The word of God. Okay. Know. Okay. So the word of God. Constant study of the word of God with obedience. Can we open to Ezra chapter 7 verse 10? Ezra 7 verse 10. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it. And to, and to teach it. statutes and ordinances in Israel. Amen. Amen. So constant study of the word of God. There are four. Can someone remember the next one? This is not your major question. It will be your bonus question. There's a prize after this. So. Yes. Pray always pray. Wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so to pray, prayer, prayer, prayer. Amen. You can take that from Matthew chapter 26. No, Mr. Mr. Someone has. There are four points. No, no, no. Yes. Amen. Let's give him a hand of applause. For listening to the sermon. Yes. Thank you. Then the last one, the last one, the last one is constant dedication of your mind. The constant dedication of your mind. Rededication of your mind. Constant re rededication of your mind. Amen. Okay, next, next, next. I will say next patient. What question? Mr. Evans, what question? E two. Question two. Okay. What does carnality mean to you? What does carnality mean to you? Please buttress it with a lot of memory verses, even a song. <laughs> You can buttress it with a song. I have, I have history book here. <laughs> Before I start, let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 6. That's to right. That's right. <laughs> let's go there. Please, have somebody open it. Can our mind is enmity against God? Amen. Yes. You need more. Yeah. Oh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, 21. Yes, yes. They do that do they that quit do things that shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we have to look at that one too. So that's all. Yes. Yes, yes. Can we re can you please open and read yourself? Because he's hundred percent right. Exactly what was preached in the in the message. Yeah. I say, then walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Amen. Amen. Let's give him a, a round of applause. Let's give him a round of applause. God bless everyone who um, doesn't just listen, but um, writes down, goes home, and ponders over the message. Like Mr. Extra blessing. God bless you. Maybe you write it in the tablets of your heart. That one is okay. <laughs> Our okay. next victim has picked question 12. Okay, okay. So our sister, Mrs., our new Mrs., has picked question 12. Can we, can we listen? Mrs., maybe after the sermon review. Mr. Flesh us. enables us to go against the will of God. Give an example of how this is made manifest in our daily living and the flesh enable us to go against the will of god give an example of how this is made manifest in our daily living and how you can overcome it yes 
So this one is your own personal something. How you can overcome Mr. Flesh in your life. Yeah. <laughs> Overcome, how to overcome the flesh? It's just like how to overcome the flesh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Please, you would like to read the question again? No. No. <laughs> then answer. How we can overcome Mr. Flesh is by. Respecting the will of God, mm -hmm. honoring it, mm -hmm. and as well as being prayerful. So anytime you, you think that the wrong things that you don't want to do is coming, you need to try to overcome it. And even if you can't overcome it and it happens, you need to at least remember, like, you don't have to continue be doing it and be going to lead, but... Once you remember and know yourself, you need to turn fast by um, overcoming Mr. Flesh anytime it comes to your way. Amen. Can we please clap for her? Please give her a golden clap. <laughs> a married clap. <laughs> please, can someone support? Can someone please help to expantiate on what's possibly an example of how we can overcome the flesh. A practical example will be, will be, will be nice. A practical example will be, will be nice. Appreciate I, it. I will support the married woman. Thank you. <laughs> a, a practical way to um, overcome the flesh is avoiding the things that trigger whatever it is that your flesh likes to do. So if watching certain shows triggers some thoughts in your head don't watch the shows pra practical example um, <laughs> very true very true oh oh i thought i just gave one okay <laughs> he <laughs> wants to expand shit <laughs> mr he, evans he, I'm not supporting. he's supporting me he's supporting you mm. okay. he said anger so let's so anger is a work work of the flesh Okay. To avoid expressing yourself in an angry manner, I guess when when somebody's somebody's raging at you or something bad has happened, keep quiet and walk away. That's a practical way to to deal with. Keep quiet and walk away. Amen. God bless you for helping. Next, next. <laughs> okay, question three. <laughs> question three. Name some. Uh, some manifest works of Mr. Flesh. Some manifest works of Mr. Flesh. Yes. Yeah, so you can mention, to, mention about three. Uh, according to Galatians chapter uh, 5, verse 19. Yes. Uh, yeah, ado yes. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, and among, among others. Can we give him a hand of applause? Can we give him a hand of applause? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for giving us and supporting it with a, a scripture verse from the sermon. Thank you very much. Mr. Rafa. Mr. Rafa, you are the next patient. Question nine. Question nine. Question nine. Nobody is speaking question 40. Francis. Do you believe that one can actually be free from the works of the flesh? Do you believe that one can actually be free from the works of the flesh. Yes. Yes, can you help us explain? Yes, by uh, identifying the work of the flesh, then by giving your life to Christ and do things that will build your spiritual uh, stamina, then uh, by 
making sure the flesh is malnourished and not being fed by things that will make it grow. So John said in the book of John chapter 3, he said that I might decrease, that I represent flesh and he might. So spiritually we grow, then carnality, which is I, that I represent. Amen. God bless you, sir. Please, can someone also help to expand um, this, um, what he said? Anyone who has a contribution can add. Any con Mr. Ofer, can you please read the question one more time? Mr. Ofer, the question. Do you believe that one can actually be free from the works of Mr. Flesh? Yeah. Do you believe that one can be free from the works of Mr. Flesh? Anyone, can anyone help us to um, expand? He has said it. But can anyone help us? Do you believe I, that one can be free? I believe that one can be free from the power of the, of the deeds, right, of the flesh. Because... Well, first of all, the, the spirit is more powerful than our flesh, so he's definitely able to overcome. It is for us to work with the spirit of God. So it, an example would be anger. When the spirit of God deals with you concerning anger, even situations that used to trigger you before, when it comes up, you will find yourself not responding because it has been dealt with. So you're, you're very able to overcome. Amen. Thank you so much, Mr. Rafael and Antidocus. Can we have the next question? Next, next, next. <laughs> question 15. Question 15. <laughs> question 15. Okay, what happened to four? Question 4 is a, is a double question. <laughs> question 4 is 2 in 1. <laughs> yes. What <laughs> one? Question 15. Question 15. Is please, anger please. a work of Mr. Flesh? Why do you say so? Is anger the work of Mr. Flesh? Why do you say so? Yes, it is. You have to explain why anger is the work of Mr. Because Flesh. When you are angry, on this, a, this is a very debatable question. So yeah. please, let's when you are on, uh, angry, mm -hmm unnecessarily you tend to justify your point without any justifiable reason what, what i mean is that for example you said me i came to you maybe the way i reacted that particular day later i realized it wasn't good. but for me to keep in that track i begin to give excuses just to justify myself but because i've Shown the anger more than necessary, it becomes uh, as a result of the Mr. Flesh living in me. If you go to the book of Mark, uh, chapter 7, from 15 to 23, it says, There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defy him, but the things which come out of him, those that those are they that defy the man. So it means what comes out of your mouth as you make to sin, possibly against man, against God, or against yourself, because you've said what you're not supposed to have said. So it, became, uh, it becomes a kind of, as a result of. Amen. 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 So someone. Is behind me saying, I disagree, I disagree, I disagree. Can you uh, please ask him why he disagrees? Dear Isaac, <laughs> dear Isaac why do you disagree? <laughs> it's anger. Um, I personally think anger is not a work of Mr. Flesh. What you do when you're angry is a work of Mr. Flesh. Anger, it's even God gets angry, and God is total holiness. Okay. So, Mr. Someone actually did say um, your reaction, how you react when you come, when what comes out of you when you are angry is what is the act of Mr. Flesh. 
Moses. Exactly. You're answering someone's question. <laughs> Bible says that anger rests. Please, can we? Mommy has the floor. <laughs> mommy. It's <laughs> fourteen. Mommy has the floor. Mommy, please, you are saying something. Just on the anger. Bible says that anger rests in the bosom of fools. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. <laughs> and Bible also says that the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. So it is expedient that when you find yourself that you're angry, do nothing. That's the way to overcome hunger. You, be, you make it a life, do nothing. Because whatever works that would be done at that point of anger will not do the righteousness of God. Amen. <laughs> Shall we? Can I proceed? Question 14. Engaging Mr. Flesh and trying to overcome it cannot work hand in hand. Explain this statement according to Mark chapter, 20, chapter 3 verse 23. Again. Engaging Mr. Flesh and trying to overcome it cannot work hand in hand. So it simply means you cannot... Um, being the flesh that is your you're portraying the flesh like it's all over you your it's all over you your your you're not doing anything according to the spirit and then you say you want to overcome it it's it's um it's not possible and then mark chapter 3 verse 23 says and he called them unto him and said unto them in parables how can satan cast out satan how can satan cast out satan it means you cannot be in the flesh and then you say i do not want to live according to the flesh so basically you'd have to start living an old life so as to cast out the flesh or not portray it am i like, am i communicating yes please okay you are. Yeah, everybody's just looking at me. Can we, give her, can we give her a hand of applause? Can we give her a hand of applause? Amen. How yeah. did anger, a sin of the flesh, affect Moses? He stopped Moses from entering the Canaan land. <laughs> So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> the question is, how did anger, a sin of the flesh, affect Moses? Um, it stopped Moses from entering the Canaan land. Whether biblical, whether not biblical, he stopped him from entering Canaan land. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So that's the bot. Please, uh, Mr. Ivan, do you have any Bible verse to support this? Can we have a Bible verse to support this? Exodus, Exodus, Exodus. So the truth, the, 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 the answer is correct. The answer is correct. Um, actually, Moses didn't enter the promised land because of his anger. And there were so many instances that mommy preached. Both Sundays she preached about why uh, Moses didn't enter. And even God said, this matter is settled. You are done this. It's such a painful. Like, this, the whole week I kept on pondering over it. Like, such a painful thing. Like, no, like, can you imagine when someone, like, Ore comes to you and she's like, can we go to Dollarama? Then you say, no. Then Ore comes, Auntie, please, Auntie, please, say, no. Don't talk about this matter again. It's like, it's so painful. It's like, that is it. You can't talk about it again. You are, you are done. God actually told Moses that 
that is settled. You are not entering the promised land. After 40 years on the desert, like, it's so painful, but it was because of the Israelites that he was angry. Yeah. Because of people. The same people. Yeah, yeah. Concerning, concerning Moses, I, I think uh, as, as, as Moses, uh, that's that scripture always um, surprises me because what anger can do? Anger can blow, blow you from obeying God's instruction and you doing what your flesh anger or uh, according to the scripture, Moses was angry with the people and it blows it from what God said. And even God, when it comes to obedience, Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. When it comes to obedience and disobedience, God takes it so serious. So when God gives instruction and real for me, like <laughs> what's he committed? So like you said, God said this person is something. There's no way back. No repentance or there's no way for him to, to redeem. So Make you to be afraid, you know. Thank God for Jesus. That, that. <laughs> that is here. <laughs> Violence. Amen. We have come to the end of this sermon review. Actually, the question four was actually split between Mr. Orof and you. So, 15. Someone has said 15. So, yeah, Mr. Someone, 15 and 4. Yeah, so that is it. So we, God bless everyone for taking part and for making the session an interesting one. Yes, and may we continue to live according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. The answer is Jesus. The answer is Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can help us to stay away from the flesh and live according to the spirit. Mr. first said something one time when he stood there. He said, the flesh will not enter the kingdom of heaven. The flesh will turn to dust, but we are allowing what will turn to dust to control us. How? It's the spirit that is aligned with the spirit of God that will make it the soul that is important. But the flesh is of no profit to us. And the spirit and the flesh are constantly battling in our hearts, in our minds. The flesh wants this and the spirit wants this. Let's not allow the flesh to win. Let's allow the Spirit of God to win. And we'll be victorious in all our endeavors. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this afternoon. We thank you for being with us. We thank you for your blessings today. Father, we appreciate whatever that you have done today. We pray that whatever that we have said here, shall be done in the name of Jesus. We pray and use today as a point of contact for this month and the rest of the month. We pray in the name of Jesus that from today we shall be victorious in the name of Jesus. We shall be successful in everything that we do in the name of Jesus. For your word says that whatever our hands shall find to do, we should do it and you will bless it. Therefore, we pray, O oh God, that whatever our hands shall find, O oh God, Father, we pray that you will bless it in the name of Jesus. Order our steps, Father, protect us with good health, strength, and everything. We thank you, we bless you. In Jesus' name, we are praying.